In today's video, we will go through the events of 2021's horror, Separation. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment on what your favorite part was, and subscribe to our channel for more. Jenny Vaughn is a six-year-old girl living with her parents, Jeff Vaughn and Maggie Vaughn. At the beginning of the movie, Jenny is at the attic of her home, playing with her monster puppets. Her dad, Jeff, and babysitter, Samantha, are in Jeff's office looking at his work. Jeff is a cartoonist and makes comics for a living. Jenny sees a bird hitting the skylight window. She climbs up a cupboard to get a closer look, but trips and falls. Her head is injured. Jenny's mother, Maggie, comes home from work and is shocked to see her daughter injured. She blames Samantha and Jeff for being careless. Maggie and Jeff do not have a good relationship. Jeff has been unemployed for three years now, and Maggie takes care of all the finances. They fight in front of Jenny frequently. Maggie brings Jenny out to the car to get her to the hospital, but she doesn't want Jeff coming with them. A few days later, the couple is in a divorce settlement office. Maggie is there with her wealthy lawyer father, Paul Rivers. They negotiate the terms of the divorce. Maggie pleads for full custody of Jenny, but Jeff refuses to do so. Both the parents want to be with their daughter. Maggie and Jenny have been living with Paul since the accident. After their discussion, Maggie tells Jeff that he can spend the next day with Jenny. Jeff returns to an empty house. Even the house he lives at belongs to Jenny. He watches old videos of his family in dismay. Cut to the following day. Jenny and Jeff are in a cafe waiting for Maggie to arrive. Jenny draws on her notepad as Jeff watches her. Just then, his old college friend Connor recognizes him. He is now the CEO of a big comic company. He offers Jeff an office job, but Jeff mistakes it for him wanting to buy his art. As they talk, Jeff gets a call from Maggie. He tells her about the job offer, but Connor corrects him. Maggie tells Jeff getting a job is not that easy. The couple gets into an argument again. Maggie is walking on the street while on the phone. Suddenly, a car hits her. She dies in the accident. It is a few days later, people have gathered at the couple's home after Maggie's funeral. Jenny starts painting with her fingers on the wall, making a mess. When Jeff asks her to stop it, she talks like a little baby referring to herself as baby. Then Jeff starts to give a little speech about Maggie when their family picture catches fire. Samantha stops the fire, but Jeff's face from the image is distorted. After the gathering, Jeff and Paul have a chat about Jenny's custody. Paul thinks Jeff is unfit to take care of his granddaughter. He also suspects that Jeff was behind Maggie's death. Now, Jeff has to find a job to win the custody battle. That night, Jeff gets a nightmare where a mimer monster is chasing him. The following morning, Jenny seems to be upset with Jeff when Paul suddenly arrives. He is there to hand Jeff the petition for custody. Jeff now has only 72 hours to get a job. He visits his friend Connor's office and gets a job as an inker. When he gets home, Jenny is already asleep. Samantha suggests Jeff let Jenny go live with Paul, but he dismisses it. Suddenly, we see a tall figure standing outside Jenny's window watching her. Jeff is inking some cartoons at night when he suddenly zones out. It is as if someone else has taken over his body. He starts to scribble on the paper he was working on, creating a monster-like figure. When he comes back to his senses, he is surprised. Just then, Jenny comes into the room and startles him. She heard something in her room and wants Jeff to check it. There is nothing in the room. The next day at work, Jeff gives Connor the sheets he worked on but accidentally puts in the one he scribbled on as well. Connor and his partner Alan Ross want to make a horror comic and they like the pictures. Alan hires Jeff as a comic book artist. Alan takes him to his office and explains to him the work. He believes in spirituality and ghosts. Later at night, both Jeff and Jenny are drawing on their notepads. Jenny refuses to show Jeff hers until it's done. A glance at her notepad shows that she is drawing the exact monster-like figure Jeff had drawn yesterday. Later, Jeff is still working when a noise wakes up Jenny. She looks around her room and sees a tall monster puppet standing in a corner. She screams in fear and calls for her daddy. Jeff rushes to her room, but the puppet is gone. They sleep together after the incident. The following day is a good one. Jeff puts in the effort to make Jenny happy. They play with puppets, run around the house, and draw together. Jenny tells him that this is the best day ever, but at night, they are both woken up by the same monster-like figure again. Jeff puts a camera in Jenny's room the next morning. Jenny tells him that she is scared of the monsters who come at night, to which Jeff tells her to make friends with them. Jeff tells Jenny to go to the bath the following day, but Jenny says that her mommy said she doesn't have to take baths in the morning. Jeff also sees the monster figure she had drawn on her notepad. 
At work, he is distracted by Jenny's behavior, so he searches for the reason on the internet. Just then, Alan comes into Jeff's office. Since Alan believes in ghosts and spirituality, Jeff tells him about Jenny's behavior. Alan suggests that Maggie's spirit is still in the house and is haunting them, but Jeff is doubtful of the idea. Samantha and Jeff bring Jenny to the park the following day. Jenny runs around climbing on statues while the other two talk about the custody battle. Jeff is starting to consider the idea of giving Jenny to Paul for her better future. There is a puppet show going on in the park. Jenny insists on watching it. Suddenly, everything goes silent for Jeff. It is as if he is hallucinating. Everyone in the crowd turns towards him and starts making faces. Then everything goes back to normal. Scared, Jeff picks up Jenny and sprints out of the park. When they return home, Samantha tries to kiss Jeff, but he retreats. Embarrassed, Samantha leaves the house. At night, while Jeff is drawing, he sees Jenny talking to someone through the camera. She asks the person to come to her and introduces them to her toy puppets. Jenny has taken Jeff's advice and made friends with them. Jeff looks closely and sees the tall puppet monster move in the corner. He rushes to Jenny's room but sees no one. Even Jenny is gone. When he looks out of the window, we see Jenny's puppet move in the background. Jenny startles Jeff from behind. He puts her to bed when Jenny talks about her new friend. Jeff asks her about them, but she dismisses it. Samantha comes in the following day. Jeff is worried about Jenny. He asks Samantha to take care of her and leaves for the office. At the subway, Jeff is looking at his work when suddenly everything goes silent. The crowd disappears. He is there by himself. Then a puppet appears in front of him. Jeff walks towards it. He removes a cloth revealing its face when suddenly it chokes him. At work, Alan tells Jeff about this concept in which spirits possess things like a doll or a house. At the same time, Jenny sees a puppet outside her window and smiles at it. The attic door opens by itself for Jenny and she goes in. Samantha hears Jenny talking to herself and goes to look for her. The attic door closes by itself. Samantha calls Jenny from outside the door to open it. Then it opens again. Jenny comes down the stairs, but behind her, Samantha sees a huge puppet. This freaks her out. Samantha is still crying when Jeff comes home. She tells him about the incident. Jeff then locks the attic's door and keeps the keys himself. He walks into his home office to see all his work scattered around. Someone had destroyed them. Furious, he walks into Jenny's room and scolds her, but she denies doing it. She then tells him that she talked to her mommy recently. The next day, Jeff takes Jenny to his work. He apologizes to Alan for the work being destroyed and also shows him Jenny's drawings of monsters. Alan again suggests that Maggie is coming to take her child back because that is what she wanted the most before her death. He then gives Jeff a device called the ayahuasca. It will help him talk to Maggie's spirit. He brings it home. Later at home, Jeff and Samantha are talking when suddenly Jenny starts to choke. Jeff looks closely and sees her having an allergic reaction. Samantha calls the paramedics and Jeff uses an EpiPen on her. Jenny finally calms down and is back to normal, but the chandelier in front of Samantha swings on her head, making her unconscious. The police and the paramedics then arrive. Some check on Jenny while one of them interviews Jeff. They see a bruise mark on Jenny's stomach and assume she is being abused at home. Paul too arrives at the house. Jenny is taken to her room when the adults talk. When she is alone, Jenny goes to the attic and sits on the skylight. She is talking to a puppet that floats in front of her. Jenny calls it mommy and asks her not to harm anyone. Samantha is sleeping in Jeff's room due to her injury, but she is woken up and suffocated by the same puppet Jenny called mommy. Terrified, she runs downstairs and tells Jeff. He asks her to go home. Jenny will stay at Paul's for the night. While wishing her goodbye, Jeff asks her if she really talks to Maggie. Jenny replies with yes. Later, Jeff uses the device Alan had given him. Maggie's puppet appears behind him and he asks her to let Jenny go. He wakes up the following morning in the living room. They are at the lawyer's office the next day when Jeff agrees to move upstate with Jenny near Paul so she can be near her grandfather. Paul tells Jeff that they have found the car that killed Maggie. Jeff then goes to his office to quit the job while Samantha, Paul, and Jenny come home to pack. Paul gets an email stating the name and picture of the person who killed Maggie. He is on a call with Jeff when suddenly someone pushes him down the stairs. Jeff comes home to see Paul on the stairs. He shows him the picture of the killer. Samantha comes down and insists Jeff run away because there is someone in the house. Jeff shows her the picture of the killer. It is Samantha herself. Samantha was jealous of Maggie and in love with Jeff, so she killed her. 
She had also poisoned Jenny's food. Samantha threatens Jeff with a piece of glass when Maggie's puppet appears behind her. She picks Samantha up and stabs her in the neck, finally killing her. Seeing all this, Jenny gets scared and runs up to the attic. Jeff follows her to find her sitting on the skylight window. She is about to fall when Jeff tries to save her. However, both of them fall down the window. Jeff opens his eyes to Jenny, telling him that they had fallen. He is lying on the concrete. Maggie has saved them. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel to see more of these movie summaries.